Hello everyone, welcome to week two of World Geography. The purpose of this video is to give you a quick synopsis of the content that we will be covering throughout the week. You can find this information under the weekly breakdown that goes over some of the main titles and just a con and includes a condensed version of the skills that you'll be applying throughout this week. First, I want to start off with going over the agenda. So throughout our lessons, we're going to be exploring climates and ecosystems, identifying how climates differ from weather. So these two terms you're going to be um, distinguishing and defining and applying to different um, texts and uh, exercises that we'll be conducting. Then we're going to be looking at the Earth's main climate region and describing them on maps. So that's what's going to take us to the map and graph analysis that's going to be color coded. Um, you'll be taking part in activities and practice questions that ask you to analyze and indicate different climate regions on maps. Then we're going to be engaging with things that have us consider um, modern day society. So we're going to be looking at people and the environment in terms of population and growth. We'll be looking at trends, again, through graphs and tables and some parts of different newspaper articles to analyze how people depend on the environment and either harm or protect it. So this is where you guys are also going to be active agents of change and lifelong learners because you're going to look at the causes and effects and see how that's applicable in your society or even on school grounds. Then we'll also look at urbanization to compare the causes and effects of population growth, as mentioned. We're going to be looking at things that also have to do with push and pull factors, right, when it comes to migration. That one's one of my favorite lessons because you guys are able to apply it to your own family experiences, or you might want to conduct research on other areas that appeal to you as well. So you'll learn a lot from that part of the lesson um, in this unit. Um, even with the climate regions and the color-coded maps and all of that, you're going to be really addressing this one big question, why does climate vary in different areas of the world? So we do know that it varies, but what is the reasoning behind it? What's the process behind it? What's you know the scientific um, answer to that, right? So we're gonna be taking a look at that. First, for instance, we're going to be starting off with a photograph of a tropical rainforest. We're gonna look at the relationship between climate, right? Which differs than weather um, and communities of plants and animals. So. We'll use a lot of photography and a lot of articles, like I mentioned, just to base our discussions or build our discussions around um, to keep you engaged rather than just merely, you know, reading the text and all of that. You're also free to bring in photos of things that you think relate to the lesson at hand. Um, yes, so now we're going to look at analyzing graphs. So when we're discussing climate, we're going to be looking at graphs that um, focus on particular towns. For instance, this one is where I was born. So this is in Chicago, Illinois. We're going to use this visual information to see which season is rainiest in Chicago and if that's still the case, right? Um, given that we have different environmental factors and situations that affect the climate of the area. We're also going to do um, a deep study on the water cycle. So we're going to be having a hands-on presentation for that where we might be visiting the science lab for a quick activity. And you are required to know this cycle very, very well. It will appear on quizzes and exams. So I do want to give you a heads up um, regarding that matter from now. Then we're gonna look at climate regions, okay? So this is on the map that we're gonna be looking at. You do need to know these terms. You need to know which regions are dry, which ones are tropical, um, where po polar climates are. You're gonna to have to indicate that and be able to explain the differences in these terms and provide examples of each one.
Okay. Now, here's the fun part, in my opinion. When I did mention push and pull factors earlier. So the reasons why people migrate or why they decide to make changes in their life um, in terms of location. So we have two things. We have push factors and pull factors. So under push factors, one example can be population pressure, okay? poor health care, natural disasters, um, bad educational chances, inadequate job offers, and then pull factors, right, are improvements in the standard of living, higher wages, a quality of education, no social compulsion, compulsory compulsions, and future prospects. Um, that's what uh, grabs people to want to make that move. And the opposite is of why people want to move out, right? So we'll look at different scenarios of that and where they've been applied. We're also going to watch a video to understand the causes of deforestation when we're looking at environmental changes. Deforestation is one of the most current mm -hmm. um, environmental issues that um, we are experiencing. So why is this becoming a more prominent issue in modern day society, right? We're going to look at a, uh, or we're going to take part in a zombie apocalypse uh, activity, okay? Um, this is where you're going to be, you know, engaging in watching a TED Talk and pretending that you're experiencing the zombie apocalypse to differentiate between pull and pull, push and pull factors. Then we, I want you guys to have a, um, a small little interview with a family member about migration if your families have experienced that. We'll also be covering urbanization and industrialization in terms of exploring, um, you know, effects on the environment and the human interaction or experiences that, um, you know, have shaped um, people's lives. And that's all. Now, when it comes to resources, um, you do have the unit page that has the resources. The daily uh, pages have the activities that we're doing and the attachments. So if you're ever absent, you can access those PDFs, okay? Um, Lizard Point is still something useful for this week. World Atlas, of course, in terms of the five themes in geography, since that's the biggest thing we're focusing on in this unit, all of these fall under that umbrella. And then for the climate regions, I added this last website here in the video um, synopsis for week two. But I really want to make sure that you're looking at the pages on a daily basis. If you need more help or you need more resources, reach out to me um, through email um, or through BC. There's that option of you sending me a message. You can also talk to me one on one if there is anything urgent or schedule a time to meet during office hours. And that is all. I'm excited for this week and the activities that we have planned for it. So please attend and be responsible in terms of bringing your belongings and be ready to learn. That's all. Thank you.